You are listening to the Built to Grow podcast, delivering the knowledge in all things fitness business. We help gym owners win. Here are your hosts, Tim Lyons and Randy Angston. All right, welcome back to yeah. <laughs> Built to Grow podcast. I'm your host, Tim Lyons, and I'm here with the captain of confidence randy <laughs> angston how are we doing today oh it's a great day great day <laughs> we're gonna make it that way yeah we're gonna make it a great day yeah, we're gonna force it so i want to welcome everybody back so this this podcast is uh you know our mission is to help gym owners win and everything we're going to talk about in this podcast is to support that mission and that that means a lot of things it's a broad stroke of the brush helping gym owners win so that can mean marketing sales leadership mindset delivery systems everything that you would need that uh to dominate to be successful to be successful so today's podcast is something that uh hits me right in the in the feels if you will <laughs> it's about being a leader okay being a leader and and why being a leader is more than just being the boss okay and so this this is something that comes up quite a bit in every, every you know starting when you're a youth all the way up especially if you're playing sports sports athletics mm -hmm. uh you know i was fortunate enough to to have a, a you know a smidgen of athletic talent and then some leadership qualities at a young age and i always seem to be like the captain of the team or the academic you know player of the year or started and I was the special teams captain in my early age so I got that leadership thing just kind of thrown into my lap and I've been able to develop that over time I think that's helped me be able to create teams of people you're one of the people sure, on the team yeah. I mean you get you have the other side of the, of the uh, uh, conversation but just because you're the boss doesn't mean you're a leader. Absolutely. I mean, we, we've all seen people in a leadership role or a boss role, a boss role, I guess, you know, just keep things in alignment. And uh, they're, they're not very good leaders by any means. Right. Um, they it's a position of authority and dictation. And it's not something where, you know, we've all seen the images online and stuff of, of a leadership versus a boss, yep. an individual pushing people towards a goal versus pulling them pulling and them. helping them. And um it's 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 easy to see when it's somebody who is not an effective leader. I think that stands out even more so you, because the focus is on them, mm -hmm. as opposed to an effective leader where quite often they're in kind of in the shadows, right? They work amongst their team, and everybody has a role, and everybody seems to succeed together. Right. And one of the things that I would say is a big important is let, letting your team have a voice and let, letting your team, anybody that's in your team, uh, understand their importance of the, the bigger goal. Uh, there's a book by, I think, Larry Pink called Drive. Okay. And so with that, that book, if you haven't read it, it's, it talks about what drives employees and teams and, and not all of it's money driven. In fact, very little of it is when you start to interview people on your team and if you find out that they just want to be appreciated they want to know that they're making a difference they want to be part of the greater uh greater mission especially if you if you were to poll and look at some of the studies on millennials it's not monetary it's it's mission driven they just did a study it's going around online right now more employees would prefer a friday pizza party to a raise interesting Appreci is I mean, being I don't personally understand that. I mean, you know my personality well, we, type, We don't right? like but pizza, though. I mean, I mean, we like pizza, but... Whoa! Okay. We don't like pizza or we don't eat pizza? <laughs> don't eat, that's a, true. I'm from Chicago. You, you don't insult pizza. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I, I do like pizza. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. We just, it's just not part of the program. Yeah, you don't get this fine physique without a little couple pieces <laughs> of pie in there. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, along with that, uh, one of my absolute favorite quotes, uh, I think it's Zig Ziglar. Um, mm -hmm. People will work for a paycheck, but they'll die for recognition. There you go. That's a perfect example. It, it, absolutely. And it's not in some of it. It could be personality type. You know, there are individuals who are monetarily driven more so than than other areas. But uh, I think as a whole, people want to feel empowered. They want to feel like they're making a difference. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do that. Just seeing, you know, more money in the bank every right. couple of weeks. You right. know what I mean? So um, I completely agree. Yep. And so I've I've got the unique uh perspective of, of running two different companies that are completely opposites of each other as far as the way they're structurally yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so 
for, for those of you who don't know that I, I own Pulse Fitness, which is a, obviously a training facility where we train clients here in person uh, and we, we train them and we're keeping them accountable and they, we have an actual physical location. Mm -hmm. And then ProFit Marketing Solutions, which is a coaching and marketing company for gym owners, which is more or less virtual. Mm -hmm. And so with the, the structure of Rat Pulse, we have a start time. We've got to be here in person. We've got to train clients. We've got a you know uh, an org chart. The you know, brick and mortar basis. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Like a like a a real <laughs> like a real, a real, a real <laughs> company. A real business. For those of you listening <laughs> online, I'm using quotes. A real company. Uh, over with Profit, it's virtual. We don't have start times. They're very loose. We don't have um, hours. Everybody's kind of on salary. We've got some bonus structure and stuff, incentives and things like that. And then we have. You know, no, we have unlimited vacation time and mm -hmm. I don't care where you're at as long as the job gets done. Yeah, it's almost like a, the digital nomad type situation, yeah. right? And I, mean, I really like, and I purposely, when we set the company up, I wanted that to be the case because I don't, you know, I don't like micromanaging where, you know, clocking in and clocking out. That's not the thing. What my personality is if the, there's a job to be done, it just gets done. If there's nothing going on at the time, then, then don't work. Like it's just how it works. Mm -hmm. And, and miraculously things get done <laughs> Miraculous. out yeah, of nowhere right it, it comes from um you know leadership comes top down um i can give you credit in the fact that you, you know you you're one of the hardest working individuals i've ever known um and the team that you've assembled i think it emulates a lot of that mm -hmm. um each of us have i not to toot my own horn but our you know our toot, own toot. Personal <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> but uh pat myself on the back over here but uh no, you know, we have our own drive and our our own goals and admi admirations and things that we want to you know perform for ourselves. Um, you know, we're not the type to if there's something to get done, we're going to do it as effectively as possible. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I really like about our organization is the fact that there's a, there's systems and ways of doing things, but it's not so um, regulated and regimented. You know, like the corporate America thing where okay, this job is going to take you an hour and it's got to be done this exact way. Yeah, you yeah. know, you, you've kind of empowered us to look at a situation and say, okay, this needs to be got, done. This is the end goal. Go do it as effectively as possible and in a way that it makes the most sense and, you know, the, the job gets done. Right. As opposed to follow this process. It has to be done this exact way just because, you know, right. somebody's going to screw it up. Like an assembly line. Yeah, exactly. Yep, there's a lot of gray area in the profit side uh, over on the pulse side it's pretty pretty much you know it's the same process every time now what we do do allow our coaches to do is to modify workouts based on the individual sure so we've got our structure for the workout and if we somebody comes in you know they're, they're they've got a shoulder injury yeah we're making some changes and it has to happen on the fly it sometimes has yeah to happen sometimes mm -hmm. right sometimes it has to happen on the fly and the team here at Pulse, they, you know, everybody sh shows up on time or early. They they train the clients. Or, you know, Zach, our fitness director, is in here early, late. There's no, you know, he's one of the, he's one of the guys like he doesn't have hours, but he just needs to be. The job has to get done. Job, yep. And I think employees, I guess, team, staff, whatever you want to call that that group, I think they're if. I put myself in their shoes. If I would want that, that's what I would want, right? If sure. I was in that role, like, dude, dude, yeah. So whenever I'm, I'm the type of person that that, if there's a job to be done, I need to understand why, like the whole process. Don't don't just uh, you know direct people do this and yeah. not give them the whole picture. Yeah, that's exactly kind of very frustrating. That's exactly what I was like. I need to know the whole thought process around why the project or whatever the, the task is needs to be done because it's going to what keep clients longer or if it's it's going to generate more revenue don't just tell somebody do this little piece of it without giving them the whole picture, the big picture i don't sure. i don't like that yeah, and and it, it, to elaborate on, on the conversation that we've um we had in a previous podcast about empowering your team to go make the decisions effectively there you go um and taking action just because something's been done the same way for so long in a, in a structured process does not mean it's the most effective way to do something. You know, when you have somebody else looking at something in a different way, that's where opportunities and there's, there's opportunity for um, advancement or speeding up the process or make, you know, I mean, two, two minds are better than one. We were talking about in the mastermind group, right? When you have the, the ability to have 30, 40 people looking at a, a problem, yep. you know, sometimes that, that solution comes, you know, so much more effectively and it streamlines, streamlines the process. We, you know, you, we have that freedom when it when it comes to our organization. Mm -hmm. um, we know 
why something has to go get accomplished and it's our responsibility to come up with the most effective way of doing so. To do it. Yep. And it's not always just here's step one, here's step two, you know, because it, it, it's great and it's effective. And for large scalable organizations, that makes a lot of sense sometimes when you have a hundred different people trying to accomplish the same thing. Um, but when you're running something like this and that flexibility and that, that freedom, mm-hmm. I think it, it leads to more creative, you know, opportunity and in, in ways of coming up with better processes uh, yep. more regularly. Yep. Fastest way to grow your company is allow your, allow your team to make decisions and don't jam them up if they make the wrong decision. Don't, don't you know, reprimand. I mean, obviously they, they need to be smart about making a decision. We just talked about this on, the, I think the very last podcast, if you want so. to mm-hmm. listen to it, but it really goes like this. Uh, I don't care as the leader, as the boss, if you will, uh, I don't care if you make a wrong decision as long as you made the decision 100 miles an hour, even if you went in the wrong way. And there has to be a reason why you made the decision. Don't mm-hmm. just flip a coin and say, eh, let's do this instead of this. Uh, no, if you, if you thought as the employee or the, the team member, if you thought that that was the best solution or decision for the problem at the time, and you just went all in and it's wrong, I'm gonna pat you on the back, man. Yeah, yeah you know what? A, we mm-hmm. screwed up. We'll take ownership of that. Let's go ahead and redirect the ship over here this way. And then also being, you know, making sure your team understands that they're accountable and responsible, and it's not somebody else's problem when something's wrong. Like take ownership. Taking ownership, sure. That's what's, a, yeah. what's that book? Extreme ownership. Yep. It yeah. Talks a little it's something a, about a, that. That's a good one. The is uh the follow up dichotomy of leadership mm-hmm. another great great read so Jocko so, and uh, I can't think of the other gentleman great great reads though another yep. that's you're gonna hear a ton of books and yeah things like that from us that's just kind of how we operate so if you're just starting out if you've got one employee or if you're a one man or woman show uh, the best way to grow a team is to this is the way I coach it is uh, understand all the things that have to get done in the in the in the company to get the project done or to train a client, what has to happen? You've got to answer the phone. You've got to market, right? You got to sell somebody into a program. You got to write the workouts. You've got to train the client. Who's going to follow up with client. Who's going to schedule the client, all those things that have to get done. And this comes right straight out of the book. E myth that we just talked about the other day, uh, or I make sure I talked about it on another podcast. I was a guest yesterday on a podcast, oh, and, podcast. and I talked about it. The, the guy, uh, the guy hadn't heard of E Myth, which was interesting. But uh, E Myth talks about creating an organization as if it were a prototype to then turn around and franchise, mm-hmm. sell, scale. And when you do that, you have an organizational chart with every single role in the company or every uh, every every ta- I don't know responsibility, not responsibility, but task. There's a word that I'm missing, but uh, the processes of everything that has to happen in a company. And then you have to put the roles on the sheet. And even if you're a one man or woman show, you have to put names in each one of those roles. Mm-hmm. It could be your name in every, every one of those. single thing that gets done. Then eventually you start looking at, okay, now I can take myself out of these three p- roles and then I can put somebody else in there. And then you start growing, but everything's getting done, but you might have five different jobs in the beginning. Sure. Well, it goes back to, I mean, anybody who's following our podcast linear mm-hmm. is going to, you know, th- it goes back to creating that or bringing in maybe that admin. Yep. And Pick up start, some tasks. Yeah, exactly. Start offloading some of the non-crucial components of your day-to-day work right in line with, yep. with what you're doing here. So you've got your name and all the little boxes on the organizational yeah. chart, you know, and you might have 25 titles, but you always hear, you know, the guy wears a million hats or 10, 10 hats. You're always wearing all these hats. But eventually, yeah, as you grow, you got to get yourself out of those little roles and start backfilling with people that you can trust and build a team out of. And so uh, you're only going to be able to attract people that are attracted and want to work with you. OK. And one of the things that, that being a leader is more than being a boss is that you have to be have willing to have done everything that, it, that you ask somebody else to do. I have done every role in this both companies at one point. Absolutely. I've. I've done the marketing, I've done the sales, I've clicked the Facebook ads, I've created landing pages, I've created and written emails, I've created over there on the training gym, I, you know, I've done the sales and the janitorial work, I've done training, I've written programs, 
I've made calls to clients. I've signed people. I mean, every role that's ever been done. I, you know, the thing about it is, I'm not above going out there and sweeping the floor. I was gonna say you I'll, can't. Be... I'll grab a mop if I see something wrong. I'm gonna get it done. You can't be above the work that you're asking your team to do. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna take the trash out. That's not my job. No, if the tra trash needs to get done, thrown out. I'm gonna go take it out. It's mm -hmm. just, just that's what part of being a leader is about. That you're not above anybody else, but. People do have their roles, and if they're not doing their job, it's not that I'm going to go do it for them. I'm just going to handle it real quick, and then we're going to have a little chat. Some of that talks to the speed, uh, right in alignment with that is is the speed and effectiveness that things get accomplished. Um, to elaborate on that, right? Like, let's say you walked into the bathroom and you noticed the bathroom had the, the garbage had to go out. Mm -hmm. How long and how many people, how many steps does it take to have to go notify somebody else to go get the garbage out? You know, the, the garbage is probably going to sit there for an hour or two before somebody else has the time to go do it. Yep. As opposed to you just grabbing it, doing it, and it's done and it's behind you. Yeah. At the same time, when it comes to decision making, empowering your team to make the effective decisions and take action. You know, in our organization, you've granted us that authority for mm -hmm. the most part. You know what I mean? There's very few things that we feel limited. Like, I have to go to Tim to get, you know, make a decision for this organization. If that were the case and we always had to run back to ask for approval to go move forward, nothing would get done. Nothing would get done. Nothing. The you know what I mean? The speed was slow. Yep. Our, you know, because we each have our own independent roles that run, that our days are kind of set by. And there's obviously redundancy and we overlap and cover and stuff. Mm -hmm. But w w we've built this organization with that ingrained. And it, it's I think it leads to a more effective, a more fast paced streamline and the ability to grow and scale and move fast. Yep. As opposed to just sitting around waiting for a decision. Yeah, that's the worst, right? The big companies, that's they're like that. I, so I like staying small and being able to steer the ship real fast and absolutely. change direction. So absolutely. And it's, and it, it, it's more fun. You know, we've worked with some clients where there's nothing worse than waiting months for a decision or weeks for a decision on something that what what is there to think about anymore we've talked about the emotional responses we've talked about the logical side like is it, right now it's a math problem you, it's all figured out mm -hmm. make a decision run yeah like yeah people get paralyzed by making decisions uh as far as as the business goes but don't let your employees be that way uh support them right and if they like i said before if they make a wrong decision that's the biggest fear is that they're going to get in trouble if they don't get in trouble you know if, if you support them with making decisions Gosh, I, I want to. I'm trying to think of something that just literally happened. Not, I mean, not even a month ago. Where Zach, you know, I'm not gonna throw him under the bus. The guy made a wrong decision, right? We, you know what? And I was like, you know first, what? First, first admit I have as we, well. I mean, we all do. I go. I tell. I remember. I remember the conversation. I'm like, yep, we screwed that one up, didn't we? <laughs> Let's go ahead and fix that this time. You know, and uh, and it worked, right? Right. He's fine with it. It just it's part of part of the job. I right? think. I think from from both rows, right? As a, as a leader. It's not the fact that you're, he's not in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity to, to learn and grow and, and not make that mistake again. Yep. Um, and from his, you know, from the individual or the employee's role that you have to look at it from that realm as well. I made a mistake. It's not the end of the world. I didn't, it's not something that I'm gonna lose my job over mm -hmm. and I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be more effective yep. next time. Learn and move yeah, on from exactly. it. Yep. Exactly, exactly. As long as you have that, that desire and that, that understanding, you don't have that like that that reservations or resistance towards making those decisions you mm -hmm. you do and you make them effectively and you do it to the best of your ability because you're empowered exactly so if you're a gym owner and you are looking to grow your business you can't do it alone not not just alone from like making the decision side but you have to have a team i believe you have to have a team to be able to scale if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far, far go do together. it with a team right so if you need help figuring out your organizational chart, creating a team, understanding roles, understanding the seats on the bus of what each position should look like. Uh, that's something that we do really, really well in our private client coaching. This is something that we've been helping gym owners uh, all around the United States and actually Australia do and fix you know, organizational structures. Uh, it's not sexy. It's uh, actually, I like it because it's a lot of fun. And when you start creating this this culture in a, in a, in an environment, the gym owners like they the things change like a weight's lifted. Oh my gosh, I have help. I've got structure. I've got a system now. I can grow the gym on. If you need help with that, uh, we'll give you a website here to go ahead and book a call. It's pfmarketingsolutions.com/call. 
You can also pick up my book at timlyonsbook.com. But that's it for this episode. It was a good one. Yeah. Hopefully you guys, uh, if you learned something from this episode and you want to share this, uh, you know, we're trying to grow the podcast. So share this with your gym owner friends, trainers, uh, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs bu sure. yeah, business owners that are looking to grow their businesses. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Take care.